buzzing. Radars is buzzing. Yeah, yeah. See, y'all couldn't see it, but I was holding my hand out with an imaginary microphone, <laughs> hoping y'all would finish the chorus. <laughs> Man, what's going on? Y'all know that song? That's Yeah by Kendrick Lamar off Damn, the last album. That's the song of the week. And you are now tuned into the Bobby Keith Podcast. This is week 16, episode 16. Sending y'all some peace, love, and positivity, whether you want it or not. Take that, take that. <laughs> hey, I hope y'all had a good week. I'm sending y'all love, like I just said. And if y'all could have, if y'all uh, sang <laughs> the rest of the chorus when I when I went radio silent on y'all, shout out to y'all. And if you didn't, shout out to y'all too. I'm just grateful y'all here, straight up. I'm humbled and grateful that anybody is taking the time out of their day to listen to me, to me, me. Oh my goodness, thank you. I love y'all, and I hope that you gain something from these. Whether it be a new perspective or a bit of information or something, or maybe just a laugh, you know, because laughter can raise your uh, frequency and your vibration. It's just true. It's science. Don't believe me? Believe, <laughs> believe uh, Jeeves. Remember, you know, y'all remember Ash Jeeves? That was a thing. That was a thing. You know what I'm saying? Super. Mal- I wonder who doesn't remember Ash Jeeves. Is that like 2000 and up? People born in 2000 and up. Because that vanished quickly. Google really, really took control of that market pretty early. (laughs) And I'm not sure how it happened so quickly. But yo, happy holidays. The holidays have passed. Well, mostly. uh, New Year's is coming up. I hope everybody had good times. Uh, Positivity in this strange world that we live in currently. I don't know if y'all got to see your family. You know, I couldn't really link up um, because of the times. But... I do appreciate anybody and anything that has come into my life in these past few weeks. Thank you. And I love y'all. You know, I got a Rubik's Cube. (laughs) Y'all know about these Rubik's Cubes? They're crazy. It's so tough to solve, but I'm so excited to try to solve it. That's all I want to do. I want to figure it out. (laughs) I'm getting there. I don't want to look it up because I know you could look up like the algorithm on how to solve it. But I don't want to do that. I want to try to figure it out all natural. You feel me? <laughs> like this water I'm about to drink. All natural. Ah, y'all hear that? Y'all hear that? That sounds like directly from Gaia. That is just earth water. It's beautiful. Comes right out of earth. Right out the spring. It's beautiful. It's ice cold, you know, because it's freezing out. Ooh, that's something I wanted to talk about. So, you know, I just went and got that water, you know, because I was on zero. And if you're tuned in, the water barrier here speaking right here in front of you in the age of Aquarius. But, you know, that's the air sign. But I am the water bearer and I am bringing water information to y'all. Y'all better drink a gallon a day. Y'all better do it. Trust me. But anyway, the, the water refers to truth. And the truth of the matter is. I did it barefoot because <laughs> I forgot what cold feels like. What does it feel like for your bare feet to be in cold? I'm not saying you need to do this, but I'm saying it's good to feel that. It's really good to feel that. So, yeah, when I went to fill up my uh, my my gallons, my empty gallons, you know what I'm saying? I got like six five-gallon containers. And you walk from your car, you know, over to the spring and you fill up. I was barefoot and it was snow. You know, I wanted to connect, connect with the earth. And, you know, I'm, I feel like we take so much from the earth and we take so much for granted from the earth. And I live in the granite state. So it's like, damn, I got to be connected. I'm always connected to nature. So I, I, I went shoes off and it felt good, you know, because uh, my mind state was. I want to do this. I want to feel earth uh, in this winter form because, you know, in the summer, I do it all the time in the spring, in the fall, whatever, however you want to slice it. But I never do it in the winter. I never go barefoot in the winter. And I was like, you know, you should go barefoot. You should feel you should feel what this is all about. What does this snow feel like to your bare foot? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I had to feel it and it felt good, you know? I don't recommend you doing it for long periods of time. This was like 15 minutes of my life, but 
I think it's cool to feel like that. I think it's grounding, it's connecting, it's understanding the earth around us and not kind of taking it for granted because we exist here. You know, go hug a tree, go do it barefoot. It's powerful, it's really powerful. I'm not fucking around with you. Like, this is real shit. You could tap into this beautiful earth frequency and this love energy, it exists all around us. That's how, well, think about think about this from a tree's perspective. Follow me, don't lose me. A tree literally is just giving to us, giving us air to breathe. It is not receiving anything from us. Some trees give up syrup, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Some trees give up water, some trees give up coconuts. They are just giving to us, apples, etc., etc. Like, and I know I, I do this, I don't even say thank you to the trees as much as I'd like to, but I do think a gratitude practice towards nature even gives you a greater sense of happiness and inner peace and love and positivity. It raises your frequency. At least it does for me. I can't speak for everybody and everything, but you know, I feel like we take a lot of things for granted and the air we breathe has got to be where it starts, right? You know, it's, it's so interesting in this time that we're in this, uh, Corona time, you know what I'm saying? With the mask, whenever I leave the store, I am so excited to take that thing off. And even in this cold air, I am just getting some of that air. It's so powerful. It feels so good and free. And at least for me, um, that cold air, it feels so good because it's just, whew. if anything, these masks should let us appreciate that the air we breathe around us don't take that for granted either because you know there's people working eight hour shifts that don't get to take off their mask and they're just breathing in the same breath they're breathing out and with a face shield our medical community literally has a mask another mask a face shield they're recycling their own breath and that starts with my own fiance i feel so bad like they in her job, she's an occupational therapy. She's got a mask, shield, all this stuff. Sometimes has to put on like a huge like, uh, like ventilating system. It looks like a dang uh, <laughs> uh, stormtrooper helmet or some shit. I don't know. I'm just I'm I'm finding myself being more grateful for the air I breathe, and that's powerful. That's so powerful. And it's so interesting that the COVID situation attacks your sense of smell and taste sometimes, right? Isn't that interesting? That's so interesting to me um, that that's like a common thread with people experiencing the virus is that they have trouble breathing and tasting. Not breathing, but I mean, yeah, I suppose some people have trouble breathing with it, but smelling and tasting. I think that's so interesting. What is that? What is it doing? What is it attaching to to cause that? That's so weird. Um, you know, I know that I have, I think we all have the ability to kind of turn off senses if we choose to. Um, you know, when I first started drinking really, really healthy smoothies, <laughs> they were so bitter, I couldn't stand it. So what I did was I just drank them without tasting them. Like, not avoiding the use of my tongue. Like, I was drinking it normally. I wasn't doing anything weird. But I was, like, consciously trying to not receive the information from my tongue that was saying how this tastes. Does that make sense? And then over time, I developed that as a habit. But I also developed this cognitive uh, cue or whatever that this is incredible for you. So you love this. And then I started tasting it again. And now I love that. Like I'm the dude that a ginger shot. Oh my God, it tastes so good. Like a wheatgrass shot. Oh, delicious. All that stuff. I love it. <laughs> Earlier today, actually, I had made one of those smoothies. And I'm like, why is, what is, something's off. And I forgot to put ginger in it. So I just like uh, took an inch little nub of ginger and I just ate it straight up. And is that cannibalism? You know, because I'm ginger. <laughs> and where does that come from? Why don't I know that as a ginger? Where does that term come from? What does that come from? Because I love the root vegetable, the ginger. Ginger is my favorite. So where, why, how is that tied into someone who looks like me? 
<laughs> I don't know. What is that? I don't know. Make it polarizing. Ginger's polarizing uh, <laughs> root. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but go chew on some ginger. <laughs> and I guess this kind of leads into, uh, you know, 2020 is ending. 2020. That's another thing. Vision. That's a sense. I have 2020 vision. I don't know what having poor sight looks like. And would that elevate my other senses? I believe so, at least from people I know with poor sight. It seems like their sense of smell is way better than mine. And I don't know what that is. What is that? Is that the universe balancing out senses so people have a more equal thing? I'm not sure. What is that? I don't I don't get it. Um and I, this is the type of stuff I wonder about. <laughs> like, can I turn up my sense of smell? I mean, deep down, I believe that I can make my sense of smell better. But what is that? Are there exercises for that? How does that work? Um, I don't know, because I think sometimes my sense of smell is incredible. But sometimes I think it's like weaker. I don't know. I, I don't I don't know if that's ringing any bells, but. Because it's not like I can't smell because I I love smelling. I can smell everything. <laughs> you know, in my house, you know how the French have the uh, the mirepoix or whatever it's called? It's like celery, uh, carrots, and onion, I believe. Well, for me, it's onion, garlic, and ginger. And, ooh, it smells so good. I love it. I love it so much. And then I get my spices involved. And this is better suited for YouTube so I can show you all the stuff. But anyway... Yeah, 2020 is coming to a close. I think it, truthfully, I think it came to a close with the Great Conjunction and the Winter Solstice and the new season starting. Because the seasons kind of make more sense to me as uh, whatever, time holders and time is such a thing because that's a created construct to keep us controlled. But I don't know, isn't it weird that on December 21st, a new season starts and then 10 days later, a new year starts. Wouldn't it make more sense to just shift the start of the like quote unquote year to the solstice or I don't know. I, don't, I always thought that was weird and how uh, astrological signs and dates are not in line with months, but there's as many as there are months. It's like, can't we just shift everything over? And just have it line up kind of more in sync with the universe. Maybe we're working towards that. I'm not sure. Maybe there's a lot of people like me who are saying this type of stuff. And eventually we will get to a point where we're more in harmony with the universe. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> this is where I get diabolical. Maybe the controllers, the controlling class, whatever you want to call it, set it up in this calendric way to be just slightly off of nature's pattern <laughs> to keep us slightly off balance and just you know just slightly off you know it just feels like something's off with the alignment as far as the way our universe works and the way our uh human calendar works and we're not it's not the only calendar there's other calendars uh all throughout time and history Everybody knows that there's different time. Everybody knows mind count. It's different. And different uh, cultures and religions have different calendars. But the widely accepted one is just a little off. <laughs> and it's not even it's not even the same country to country. Even if you're following the same calendar, some lead with the day, then the month, not the month and the day. It just gets so it's way out there. <laughs> There's just not a sense of uh, in syncness <laughs> with the universe, a sense of synchronicity with the universe as far as dates and time go. It just seems off. What is that? And time, obviously, the biggest illusion, <laughs> the uh, quote unquote fourth dimension in my in my mind time at least as far as i've found thus far time is the fourth dimension the third dimension is where we exist while we're being controlled by time and the fifth dimension is where we exist when we are controlling time hold on let me say that one more time 
The third dimension is where we exist when we are controlled by time, which is the fourth dimension. And the fifth dimension is where we exist when we control time. When you have control of your time, i.e. being in the present moment or not being obligated to be somewhere at a specific time every single day. Quite possibly you exist in the fifth dimension or other. Now, how do we know this? It's tough. I mean, how do you know? It's an inner feeling. Um, and I have no scientific proof to back any of this up. But you do know, everybody knows that there are infinite realities and dimensions where everything can happen. That's like a base level science knowledge thing. Like the fact that somewhere in the universe, in some dimension, somewhere, somehow, alternate reality, whatever you want to call it, Somebody like you, an exact version of you, is listening to this exact podcast, but the cadence that I'm speaking with is different in the other dimension. Like, this is base level science stuff. We all know that the possibilities of infinite possibilities <laughs> is is true. There's... This exact same thing is happening somewhere else with a minor twitch because all possibilities exist. So that means that we could tap into any of these possibilities and merge our dimensions and our timelines to create the reality that we seek or want or whatever word would fit there to exist in. So that's why... I'm of the belief of never stop following your dream or your pursuit or whatever you see yourself doing that you'd like to do. Well, you're actually viewing an alternate reality where this is happening and you could tap into that timeline just by making concrete steps to go towards said timeline. You could time travel. <laughs> this is what we do in the present moment. If you stay present, Are you here? <laughs> if you stay present, that it does not that does not allow itself to be captured by time. You could have a moment that ev okay, so everybody knows about like things like go going having a memory that brings you exactly back to that moment. You feel it. Your energetic spirit is just pulsing through your veins and you understand that you are in that moment but you're not but you are because you just time traveled and viewed that moment okay so i'm big on spatial memory so what i mean by that is if i drive by a certain house i can remember the exact last time i was there what i was listening to and how i was feeling and that feeling and information gets transmitted back to me while I'm in that space. Does that make sense? That is a form of time traveling in my eyes, in my view, in my spirit. So when I see myself in the future, I know that this is a real reality and I could merge my timeline to go towards that. And this may be a reason why things like the Mandela effect, Mandela effect, Mandela, Della, sheesh. Also, that could be bad memory, but um, Mandela, <laughs> that's the effect. Why people have different, different people have different memories of different things. It could be bad memory, of course, but it could also be a timeline emergence on a mass scale, a dimensional merge that leaves half of the people in one place and another half in another place and obviously half is a bad word because that implies a clean split which at least from what i've seen doesn't tend to be the case but i mean i've had this in my own life uh, talia and i my beautiful fiance we lived in a reality where chipotle opened at 11 a.m now i know this may sound trivial and crazy but it opens at 10 45 in this current dimension. In the previous dimension that we existed in, it opened at 11. <laughs> we worked there. We unlocked the doors at 11 a.m. But then, all of a sudden, 
it became 1045. And when we asked our coworkers about it, they were like, no, it's always been 1045. I don't know what that is, but it seems as though when our spirits merged into this place of unity, that we left that dimension we existed in and entered a new dimension where our love could exist. And I don't know if that's too much for y'all or y'all think it's crazy, but that's the pure truth to me. I'm the water bearer. This is what I speak. I speak my truth. You know what I'm saying? And I encourage y'all to do the same. But yeah, so to me, time, this is not a real thing. And there's so many, uh, <laughs> there's so many memes about it. Like, I love them. I love them so much where it's just like a, an alien in a robe and he's <laughs> showing up to a dinner party with his arms out. Like, time is an illusion. <laughs> And yeah, I'm that guy. I'm that alien in that robe. Shit, I was wearing an indigo robe earlier this morning. You can't tell me nothing. I was a velvet indigo. When I'm wearing my velvet indigo robe, it's not actually velvet. It's just like a normal robe that's indigo. I am Mr. Velvet Indigo. <laughs> and you can't tell me nothing. You feel me? I'm here to tell y'all my truth. I'm here to show y'all my perspective. And I just want y'all to get happier. I want y'all to spread some love. And this, in turn, at least in my belief, which is just a belief, it could change, but my deepest truth is that our universe is a dualistic one. Of course, this means split. And what is the one force that opposes duality? This is love. Love is the togetherness. Love brings together all. Love is the answer. And it sounds corny until you really feel it. <laughs> Laugh me off for real, but feel it, exist in it. It's a practice. It's just like anything. It's like yoga, meditation, basketball, whatever you do. It's a practice to be in love, existing in love. I'm sure you've had love in relationships, but this is deeper. This is, this is more. This is just outward love, period. <laughs> There's no other option. This is how you oppose duality. Just exist in love, live life, and in the moment, exist in love. It's it's beautiful. It's powerful. This is deep stuff, y'all. I hope y'all having a beautiful time with this. Humans, aliens, other. I love y'all so much. Sending y'all some peace, love, and positivity. You are now tuned into the Bobby Keith Podcast, this is episode 16. Goodness gracious, we are rolling. You know, I'm coming up on four months in this, and in eventually it'll be four years and that's just i it's something i know and that shows y'all i'm time traveling there's this isn't a <laughs> this isn't a construct i allow myself to be controlled by time that is um you know even in even in weird minor situations i believe i'm time traveling for instance christmas day the nba is on all day so, what do I do? Well, I record the games. <laughs> and then whenever I'm ready to watch basketball, I can watch the game and skip through all the commercials, essentially time traveling, <laughs> because other people in the same reality I live in, the same dimension, are watching that same game in a previous time, whereas I'm watching it at a different time. But I'm watching it without commercials and I'm skipping through time inside the game that I'm watching live. Is this too much? I feel like I'm not even following myself. But what I am trying to say is, so, okay, I have a group chat, right? Friends, we all watch basketball. We talk about basketball and among other things, of course. But what I'm trying to say is somebody sent a message about one of the games. And in my mind, I'm like two games behind. But I'm in the same time as them. But in my time, in my world, that game hasn't happened. The one that they're talking about hasn't even happened in my time frame, quote unquote time. Because my existence, in my existence, that one doesn't happen until this one is over. And then the next one is over. Does that make sense? Do you follow? So in that sense, I'm even time traveling. I don't know if that makes sense to y'all, but in my reality... In my dimension, in my existence, the way my universe is set up. <laughs> if you're watching a game that I'll get to later, 
I'm time traveling because to me, what I'm indulging and experiencing in is still brand new, but to you, it might have happened to uh, time hour units before. Does that make sense? Is this... Are you following me? <laughs> I hope that makes sense. But seriously, that's where I got the whole idea that I wanted to talk about this because I was watching the games that happened previously to the one that my friends were talking about. And in my mind, I'm like, you know what? I think I'm time traveling <laughs> because my reality is happening in a different time that theirs is. Ah, how do I make this? I hope y'all are grasping what I'm trying to say because it's, I don't know, it doesn't, how can I make this more clear in the same example? Okay, so in the game itself, if you record like a live sporting event, say a basketball game, say the Pelicans versus the Heat on Christmas Day, this, this game happened at noon Eastern time, so I don't think I started watching it until like 3.30 Eastern time. Okay, y'all follow. I had it recorded. And I just chose in my life to not use social media or any of my phone things. I was doing other stuff. I forget what I was doing. But around that time, I started watching the game. 3.30 Eastern. So to me, what happened for other people at 12 Eastern was happening at 3.30 Eastern. But I was getting the same energetic play with the information. Uh, the same downloads of information that people were getting earlier but I was getting it later and to anybody if I was trying to talk about that game I would be in the past but to me it was my present and I was skipping through commercials thus transporting time quote unquote because in real time those commercial breaks were happening but I was skipping through them I don't know, this might be pretty heavy. I don't know if it's translating. It, it, it doesn't even sound like it's translating. I have to work on this theory. <laughs> I'll come back with a more clear version of this theory. Because um, it holds a lot of weight for me. I believe it to be true. And I know a lot of y'all believe time is an illusion, but I got to find a better way to illustrate it. My favorite way, of course, is the one I presented, which is the third dimension is where you live when time controls you. And time being the fourth dimension, it's not a, uh, it's not a real place. It's just a, a construct. And then the fifth dimension, I guess it could even be alluded to control. Um, if you are being controlled, you're in the third dimension. If you are controlling, uh, let's say, that's a weird way to put it too, but I guess it works. If you're controlling your if you, oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. If you can take the step, or wait, if you are so in your body that you don't even know it, maybe you're in the third dimension. If you are in control of your body and you know that you are the soul, the spirit, not the body itself, that's the fifth dimension. I don't know, I'm working on it. I'll develop these theories deeper in due time. <laughs> Y'all heard, I gotta say that. The shit is so ingrained into us that... Even I go on this whole X amount of, look at this, I can't even describe things. Even after I go, even if I have, after, I can't even describe things without using time and time units. It's so ingrained into us that even after spending a good amount of energy, <laughs> trying different ways to say it, trying to explain why I don't believe it's a real thing, I still have to use the units of time to relate it. Anyway, <laughs> I guess I might as well pivot um, out of there. And I have another, I had another weird thought. Does Amazon own forests yet? Because I'm worried about that. Tying back into nature and Earth and Gaia. I feel like it makes sense for Amazon to start owning forests if they don't already to vertically integrate their 
packaging <laughs> you know because it's the holiday season and all i see are amazon boxes everywhere cardboard box cardboard 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 where does that come from that's trees we know that um sometimes it's recycled from itself and created into a new one but the root of it is a tree so i i don't know am i, I maybe i'm a little worried that amazon is going to start buying up forests if they haven't already because we know that they're literally vertically integrating the whole shipping process now <laughs> remember when amazon packages used to come from like fedex or ups or usps and now now they come from amazon they're literally they they're i mean some still i don't know what the percentage is it's probably like 75 percent is vertically integrated and the others get outsourced but yeah i don't know i'm worried I'm worried that the forests are going to keep getting bought and done with as the companies please. Uh, and I guess that's why I kind of have a goal to have a chunk of land that nobody can touch. Just let the nature thrive. Just let Earth do its thing. Um, I'm sure a lot of us have similar goals and aspirations and see ourselves on these plots of land that just have nature thriving. And I've spoke on this before, the communal living aspect, and I believe that's a beautiful thing that we could implement one day as far as having a huge chunk of land where we just coexist with nature and love and peace and just, just try to help the world, you know what I'm saying? Raise the frequency if we can. That's all I'm trying to do. I just want, I just want everybody to kind of experience a new existence that is more beneficial to them, more loving, more peaceful, more positive, uh, the same type of dramatic change I've seen in my life, I'd love for everybody to see. That would be amazing. I'd love for everybody to just take control of their time. <laughs> Let's loop it back full circle. But yeah, I had a friend tell me that, that, that I have control of my time and that is just so, it's so different. It's so special in our modern society. Like I... I have control of my time. It's so interesting. Like I could uh, I could be in the middle of quote unquote work and be like, you know what? That mountain over there I see, I see in the distance. I'm going to go climb that. Or oh, I'm hungry. I'm going to go home. Or, you know, I feel like I could use a stretch. Let me go do yoga. Like having this control of my time and no obligations to anybody is just so powerful. It's so, but not in the bad way. You know, power can have all of its things, um, but it's just mostly allowing yourself to be free as a spirit and not tied into any one or anybody or any event or any corporation. It's just, it's freeing, it's super freeing. And with that, I want to recommend y'all watch the new Disney movie, Soul. It's super good. It's super metaphysical. It's super layered. But I just want to give y'all some time to watch it before I go in depth because I don't want to ruin anything for y'all. Just enjoy it. And if you want to think about it on a metaphysical plane, oh my goodness, it is. They give a lot. They give a lot more than I would ever expect them to give. But yeah, that's all I'm gonna say about that. Go check that out if you haven't. It's worth it. Trust me. I know it's a Disney movie, but yo, it's it's uh it's out there. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, you know I was talking about basketball earlier. You know how hype I am. The season is back. It's in full motion. Last night I actually just caught the Celtics and Pacers. Uh, you know, this that's the local network I get. I get Celtics games up here where I live because um, that's the closest team. And I had no idea Sabonis was legit. That dude is legit. I had no idea. The Celtics were signing doubles. I mean, granted, Oladipo was out. Uh, you know, he's he's really good, but I had no idea how good Sabonis was. He probably would still get the doubles sent to him, uh, even if Oladipo was there. I'm not sure, but... Yo, Sabonis is legit. I'm talking like these turnaround jumpers while getting doubled, these spins into the layups. He had a game-winning layup. Um, and that leads us right into Tatum. Tatum is 
wow, he's out of here. He's so good. It's ridiculous. He had a uh, his one. He was like mid post, but a little out in the in the wing area. Um, if that makes sense. He had I think McDermott on him. Granted, not a great defender, but still, he spun him. Like so, he spun, going towards the basket, clean. Like left him in the dust, and then up and undered for a reverse layup, and not a soul like even got near his body because he was like just he just let every left everybody in the dust. It was so clean, it was crazy, and he had a turnaround at the uh, left elbow that was just ridiculous. And I think Holiday was even in his grill. I think it was Holiday, might have been Warren. I don't remember who was guarding him, but they were not they were not stopping that. That was just pure. And he ended up missing the game winner. Um, but what are you going to do? I don't blame him. He just hit the game winner the other night against Giannis and them. So that one hit bank. This one was short. But he got Brogdon. So he, what happened was he was at the top of the key, seven seconds left. They just inbounded it to him, seven seconds. They're down one, so... You know, you think he he's probably gonna drive, but he opts for the three, which is cool. Uh, do what you gotta do, Tatum, because if he hit it, everybody's going crazy. But he missed it, obviously, uh, so people are criticizing him. But what he did do is on that step back, he had Brogdon's back foot slip. He had a clean window for that shot, and it was a good take, a good attempt, and he just hit one the other night. So what are you gonna say? <laughs> but yeah, I'm just excited to see more basketball. Like, stuff like that. I feel like I'm seeing the game differently. I'm picking up more details than I normally do. And I'm really just enjoying it. <laughs> I don't know what's coming up this week, but I do know I want to tune in to more Pelicans games because Ingram's a problem. i just been listening to an interview he had on J.J. Roddick, Roddick J.J. Reddick's uh, podcast, and he's a problem. He is a super problem. <laughs> And I had no idea how intellectual he was about it. Like, go listen to that podcast. He was dropping gems about, like, how he's studying uh, film. Like, legit, though. Not like how just people say it, but, like, how LeBron does, like, constantly. He's, like, tuning into Spurs games to see how they play. And, you know, stuff like that. Stuff that, like, real, real, real hoopers do. And he was talking about how back on that old Lakers team, how everybody was all about the social media. And he was like... Y'all, y'all really, he was like, they love Twitter. <laughs> he was saying it like, damn, y'all put stock into that? Like, like it's real life. You know what I'm saying? He was saying it was letting them affect their moods. And, you know, that's a big thing for a lot of, a lot of people right now is to not let social media affect them spiritually. You got to stay strong. You know, I, today, just today, I went into YouTube right as i do just to see how the analytics are looking and some uh something popped up like recent comments and it was like i I don't do comments i don't read them uh especially on my old videos and stuff Uh, so it's like i never see them and i saw like two positive ones and i was like oh maybe i should be looking at comments and then there was more and then i'm like you know what let me just stop doing this before I let any of this affect me. And for about five minutes, I was like thinking about it. And then I just meditated it away and I let it float away. And now I'm talking about it again. So you could argue it's still on my mind, but it's not bothering me. I'm just letting y'all know that you can separate yourself from social media. It's pretty easy. Just stop looking, (laughs) tap into the present moment and realize that none of that matters you have no idea what the other people are going through it's usually a reflection some some trauma or some problem they're going through but yeah i thought so yeah that that uh brandon agram interview is really good so i'm excited to see that kid play and obviously zion's on the team too so you, that's must watch tv so i'm excited to see some pelicans games you know i'm excited to see more nets games because Yo, KD and Kyrie were super legit on that uh, Christmas Day game. They played the Celtics, I believe, right? Was it the Celtics? I think it was the Celtics. Whoever it was, they made quick work. Yeah, it was the Celtics. It was the Celtics. Um, KD looks like KD. <laughs> like, super legit. 
that KD is KD, and he's playing defense, like super defense, like the defense that we know he can play. And people were talking shit like the Nets can't play no defense. Da, 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 da. No, 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 no. <laughs> KD put on clamps on Christmas Day against the Celtics, second game of the season. Like, nah, he's here to play. And Kyrie was lights out, unconscious. I think Kai Kai put up 37 and KD put up 31. What are you going to do with that? Honestly, what are you going to do with that? And they're so fucking deep. Like, Karis LeVert off the bench. Dinwiddie can run the bench unit. Like, Jared Allen and DeAndre Jordan, two very good centers. <laughs> like, not, the, not the, the superstar level, but that next tier, like, that very good, competent, can get oops, plays defense. Boxes out, no spatial awareness, floor spacing. That team is ridiculous. And they got Joe Harris, that dude's lights out. The one that that might have been the one thing that I like I thought Joe Harris tried to get a few more shots than uh maybe maybe he got he had more shots in the past, obviously. But now KD's back, bro. You gotta <laughs> yo, dish the rock. There was just a couple shots and nothing against that dude. I'm sure he's super good. And he is super good. He's in the league and he just got a big contract. But, yo, when KD's over there on the wing and you're trying to ISO at the top of the key, eh, you might you might want to get a ball to KD. That's KD. <laughs> you got Kyrie too, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, I can't watch. I just can't wait to watch more of the Nets. They are so good, so entertaining. And the whole league in general, I think it's in a great place. I still have yet to see the Sixers this year. I want to see the Sixers and... I did countless teams. I want to see everybody. I want to see the the Rockets. I want to see the Blazers. I heard that was a good game the other night. I didn't see it. But, yeah, you know where I'm at. I just want to see you good basketball. I love basketball. And I told you how to see Soul. As far as music goes, uh, I took in, like, half of the new Playboy Cardi album. And I feel like it's going to be underappreciated. I won't lie. But then in three years, it's going to be like, oh, this makes perfect sense. It's very similar to the ASAP Rocky testing album. Like the sounds are just a little futuristic. And if you don't hit the bop, <laughs> if you don't see the vision, uh, it might not be the one. You know what I'm saying? But in three years, music might catch up to it. Does that make sense? Because um, that Metamorphosis track on there with Kid Cudi, apparently that came out like three years ago. And I might have heard it uh, back in the unreleased Cardi day because I was a huge Cardi fan. I'm still a huge Cardi fan, but... You know, when SoundCloud was busting, I was listening to, like, all the unreleased leaks. This dude had me go buy uh, the CDG Converse because of the uh, the talk music video. You know, the, the Icy Twat talk remix music video. <laughs> That's a deep cut. But he was wearing the CDG Converse, and I was like, damn, I need me some of them. That's fly as hell. So, like, I- I've been on the Cardi wave, you know what I'm saying? But that Metamorphosis track, the kick, it used to be called Kid Cudi. That sound, which was three years old when it leaked, so it might have been made four years ago, is now today's sound. Does that make sense to y'all? Like, that is a dude who is time traveling. <laughs> and he was talking, y'all can't even hear me. I speak hieroglyphics. Like, y'all don't understand me. They can't understand me. I'm speaking hieroglyphics. Like, come on now. What are you tapped into? All right, but that's not... As in-depth as a review as I can. Oh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, So, you know how that testing album by ASAP Rocky, I don't know if y'all tuned into that, but I love that album. I felt like that album is a future. When it came out, I thought it was like five years early. <laughs> and I feel the same about this uh, Cardi album. I mean, I only heard half of it, but the first half was like very much so like, this is where sound will go. I don't know. I don't know if y'all heard that, but uh, the met- that, that Metamorphosis track is kind of the proof, right? Because it leaked three years ago and it sounds like today's sound. I don't know. Uh, anyway, I don't know if I have much more for y'all. This seems like a short episode. Um, apologies for that. I... Uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll do better. <laughs> I'll do better. Uh... I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And I'd love for y'all to uh, keep sharing, spreading the word, giving a five-star review on Apple. You know, that really helps the algorithm. I know there's some, I actually ended up getting a bunch of random people 
uh, coming into my podcast world, which I love because of the Great Conjunction episode. I had a lot of traction on that. And if you're new, welcome. <laughs> Stick around, tell a friend, tell a friend. If this is your last time, thank you for giving me any chance. I love y'all. And yeah, I appreciate y'all. I hope you have a beautiful uh, 2021 <laughs> or whatever we want to call it. New year, new season, new frame of mind. And just spread some love for me, you feel me? <laughs> I love y'all. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Peace.